All right, I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, everybody. I know we have global audience. Uh, my name is uh, Neeraj Kumar, and I welcome you to our Azure Talk uh, session today. And uh, today uh, we are going to talk about Azure Talk, uh, uh, especially we'll cover cognitive services, Azure cognitive services. And uh, you know, I'm today I'm joined uh, by uh, Kasam Ahmad Sheikh. Uh, so he is uh, he has volunteered to you know, give this session to our audience. Uh, he is uh, C Sharp Corner Microsoft uh, MVP, C, C Sharp Corner MVP. Uh, he's author, speaker, and also an Azure architect. And in uh, his uh, free time, he blogs and uh, uh, and uh, he works on Azure application side. And like you know, he has his own YouTube channel also. Uh, as, as as you know, I'm Neeraj Kumar. I'm lead cloud architect. Uh, I have uh, uh, I've been in industry for 17 years now, and uh, for last uh, three years, close to three years, I'm exclusively working on Azure. Uh, and prior to that, I've also a uh, good amount of exposure on private cloud too. Um, I am. Uh, if you want to follow, you can follow us on uh, you know Twitter. So like you know my Twitter handle is no needage, and I think Kasam is uh, uh, Kasam Sikh. So you know you can follow us on the Twitter. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, we also have uh, this session. So if you really want to be part of these sessions and you want to receive a regular meeting invite, please feel free to register on our website www.cloudeasy.com, which with K. Uh, you know that way you will receive our regular meeting invite. So in case uh, you missed uh, uh, our messages in our uh, IM chat, in that case you can always you know count on your email address and uh, you will have a meeting invite from us. So please you know do visit our website and register yourself. Uh, the web page is there. Additionally, uh, if you're not part of our Azure Talk Telegram group, which is an IM based uh, instant messenger community group uh, for answering uh, and helping. People people answer the questions on Azure, uh, do feel free to join our group, uh, which is t.me slash Azure Talk. Uh, we also have Azure DevOps Pro group. Uh, in case you know if you have any question related to Azure DevOps, uh, feel free to join that, which is t.me slash Azure DevOps Pro. Uh, finally, uh, we publish all our sessions on YouTube. So in case uh, uh, like you, know, you missed uh, our sessions or you want to refer any of the previous sessions, uh, you can head out to our YouTube channel, uh, which is youtube.com slash C slash Azure Talk. Uh, we have uh, conducted more than 32 sessions in the past, and uh, like we will continue to do so. So in case if you want to refer any of our past sessions, you can always head over to our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and you know, I just want to quickly demonstrate uh, how the website looks like. You know, if you go to the website, uh, which is uh, cloud with K, uh, cloud e -E uh, you can come here and you can register for our IoT Talk online session. So if you register that way, you come in our database, and you know, we will send you a regular meeting invite. We will not uh, spam you, but just once uh, in a, a week, uh, our session, so that that way you are up to date uh, in case there is any and plus. Uh, any recording session that we post probably will notify you. Uh, additionally, uh, if you want to refer all our previous sessions that we have conducted on Azure Talk, uh, it's uh, listed on the website, which is Cloud Easy. And you know, if you go right here, you will see all those listing over here. So you know, from the main page itself, uh, you can navigate to your published Azure Talk. Uh, that will take you to all our past Azure Talk. Uh, on the web page, but if you really want to go to our uh, uh, YouTube channel, you can also go to our YouTube channel. Additionally, uh, you know, if you want to join our Azure Talk group, uh, you can. You know, obviously, we have shared the link, but in uh, in case you need detailed instructions as in how to join our Azure Talk group, uh, you can always navigate to this page, uh, which lets you, which shows you the instructions how to become a member of our Azure Talk group. Uh, with that, uh, I will not take a uh, lot of time, and we'll straight away get into agenda. And for housekeeping purpose, I, I I have to apologize in advance. I have muted all the audience so that we maintain high quality of you know recording. In the past, we have received feedback uh, where we were uh, getting echo and feedback, and like you know uh, audience uh, feedback uh, that uh, you know the quality was not good. So we have muted all the participants. In case if you have any question, please feel free to. 
uh, type in the chat. And uh, so somebody's saying I can't hear. Is it the same case? Can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah, okay, good. All right, so, you know, I've just muted the audience. Uh, so in case if you have any question, feel free to post those questions in the chat. You know, either I or my team members or, you know, Kirsten will take those questions either online or uh, through the chat itself. Uh, but, you know, just uh, keep posting your questions there and we'll be more than happy to answer those questions. Uh, and with that, uh, we'll get into uh, the agenda. Uh, so today's agenda is, as we said, that we'll talk about, we'll work on, uh, like, you know, the cognitive services, which is an uh, offering from Microsoft Azure. Uh, and the, you know, it com it, it's a complete package, and then it has a lot of services inside that, and we're like, you know, I will not really uh, steal the thunder from Custom, but, you know, I'll let Custom talk about it. But just to give you a brief idea, you know, Cognitive Services is an Azure service offering uh, from Microsoft, which consists of multiple services, which, you know, Custom will walk us through. So we'll talk about that. Uh, we will also talk about uh, and how, how you can create a bot uh, and using, you know, Microsoft Bot Framework and uh, how you can integrate your bot with an Azure Web App uh, bot. So like, you know, and then finally, you know, how you can connect your uh, bot to social channels or social media, like, you know, Twitter and uh, LinkedIn or like, you know, Facebook and all those things. And uh, uh, we'll also have demo where like, you know, Kasim will walk us through the demo and, you know, a couple of uh, coding scenarios where like, you know, he will demonstrate how to really uh, create um, uh, application using cognitive services from Microsoft. So with that, I will hand over to Kasim. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself, Kasim. Thank you, Neeraj. Uh, so welcome all. Again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the attendees. And thank you for joining. Thanks, Neeraj, for giving this opportunity for having this session with us your talk. So uh, Neeraj already uh, introduced me. Uh, let's uh, straight go away to the agenda. And uh, again, so we have a cognitive services uh, with uh, is the offering of Azure course. And uh, today we'll be more focusing on the service, which is known as QNA Maker, uh, which is uh, being used for creating an FAQ knowledge base, uh, or can say a database for the FAQ bots. We'll look into it uh, in uh, our further slides. Again, we'll be trying, uh, once we create that particular knowledge base or database of a bot, we can, uh, we need to integrate it with Azure bot service. That is uh, the new offering, or you can say a new service for Azure web app bots. And then we will connect that bot to our web chat uh, channel, or uh, there are many channels as of now available, like Skype, Telegram, and all, but we'll be uh, connecting it with uh, social channels. So that is uh, web chat channel. So coming on to next slide. OK, so just in high level uh, introduction of cognitive service. So what cognitive service uh, in a very simpler language, if you need to explain is cognitive service brings your, um, makes your application um, a smart app, uh, gives a human side to your application. It's uh, make your application more smarter by giving a feature like um, like recognizing something, uh, detecting something, or like you are detecting a language. For example, you are uh, recognizing the speech, you are uh, uh, recognizing a face, you are recognizing a voice, or you are recognizing a text, you are recognizing an image. So all this uh, human features can be incorporated in your application, in your mobile application, in your web application, in your any of the product uh, through uh, cognitive services. So there are, uh, if you can say, um, it's very flexible to use. It's very secure to use. It's it's an uh, like uh, uh, a wrapper services being given over uh, a very smart algorithms, machine learnings behind. Uh, earlier, the service was known as uh, Project Oxford uh, in the Microsoft itself, but later they named it as a cognitive services in Azure. So. Uh, we will see in the next slide, like it has some offerings, or uh, and it has they had divided into f five categories. That is vision, speech, knowledge, search, and language. Uh, can we move on to next slide? Yeah, sure. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, here are the some of the services which are uh, as now available. Some are uh, and still in preview, some are uh, free to use, some are a very minimal pricing uh, tier for using this. So for vision, uh, it has computer vision API, as you can see on the screen, these are a uh, few of the services into this category, like uh, computer vision, uh, like face API, where you can detect your the face uh, and you can do an authentication with using this faces and all. Uh, you have content moderator to contain your text, to contain your, you can say, tweets or anything coming around. You have have an emotion API to control uh, to check uh, the sense of uh, the human uh, human expressions like if at all uh, I will can give an example like recently I have attended an event and wherein the they were uh, working on some product uh, which is which was being uh, installed in a bank wherein uh, they were uh, they have implemented this face API and emotion API for uh, detecting like if the customer who is coming in uh, with what emotions he is coming into bank is he tensed or he is in uh, like what do you say? It's somewhat worry or is some suspicious kind of things. So there was a very uh, high level uh, explanation they gave. Like they are, but the thing is, they are implementing this emotion API uh, in the bank as of now. And uh, for giving some practical examples, so in our organization, we too, I myself too, working in a product wherein we are giving this and uh, we are using emotion APIs into our training sessions, uh, wherein there are some uh, third party trainer or uh, even the insider trainer is being uh, taking the sessions and we are keeping this emotion APIs into the faces of the attendees so that we can come to know whether are they interested in uh, getting the things, are they are getting bored or, or it's all those expressions are being taken care and we're just ready, uh, learning on those things. So it is already uh, in, uh, what we say in implemented in the products. Uh, we do have custom vision uh, services, a very similar kind of thing. This window indexer is one of the thing which we can, uh, which uh, uh, gives them windows inside and it's a very super cool uh, is it, uh, product. Is it video uh, index? Is it a video indexer which indexes the video and you know the creates the useful data out of the video? Yes, it uh, provides some data as per the video's framing is going on. Okay. On the fly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. we so move on to next slide? There, yeah. is, uh, there is a request yes, yes. Uh, from D Deepak. Uh, you want to spend some little bit more time on like, you know, the highlighted topics like, for example, computer vision API. Maybe you can explain a little bit and content moderator. Okay. So computer, uh, like, uh, uh, can we, uh, Neeraj, can we take uh, this uh, at the little bit at the end? I just wanted to focus more on Q&A maker at the start, so that sure. I need to cover some. Uh, say, I will, I will come back to this. We'll come back to this. The okay, slides well. are uh, just an highlight for what all uh, the services has been given by Cognitive Services, and we. I need to focus uh, basically on the Q&A maker, which is uh, categorized into knowledge base. All right. So if uh, at the end of time permits, we will get back into these things. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in the speech uh, category, uh, there are uh, this four uh, APIs being given. That is translator. Uh, again, this all APIs are mostly RESTful APIs, which we can easily call into our application and make a use of it. Uh, there is a speaker recognition APIs, uh, Bing speech API, customer speech API service. Uh, and the very best part is if you move on to cognitive services like Microsoft uh, official website for cognitive services, for almost all the services, they have given a demo application on the browser itself. So you can experience uh, uh, these services right in there. Uh, with a proper demo. They have even given the code part for implementing or a sample codes for implementing in your application and all. Uh, can we move on to language? Yep. Please. Yeah. So again, uh, uh, there is LOIS, that is Language Understanding Intelligence Service. Uh, this all comes on language part, that is text analytics. Text analytics, again, uh, is a part of, uh, if you, if, I don't know, like uh, many of us may be knowing about the logic apps, and uh, this text analytics is one of the connector in uh, logic apps. The face API also is one of the connector being used in the logic apps. So based, uh, if you, uh, there is a translator text API and uh, this, uh, web language model API. So if at all, if you talk about text analytics API, uh, 
this uh, uh, API does three things as of now. Like it detects a sentiments, it detects the language, it detects the key phrase. So why it is being used in logic apps is uh, like for a, a simple use case. Uh, uh, if if you are managing uh, uh, an event and we have a Twitter uh, hashtag being uh, displayed on a board in that particular event with a sp if with any uh, specified uh, uh, specific hashtag we can moderate or we can review the tweets coming in on that hashtag by using logic flow as twitter as a connector and text analytics so if a user tweets that particular uh, any uh, uh, with using that uh, specific hashtag we can pass on that text to this text analytics api wherein it gives a score as an output and uh, from 0 to 1 so if at all uh, it's uh, it's very near to zero, then it's a very it could be a very harsh statement. And if it's near to one, it's an happiest one. So according to this, we can uh, the sentiments of the tweets can be reviewed, and accordingly we can process the tweets to the board, or we can have it into the reviewer panels. So this was one of the test case uh, use case, sorry, uh, for having this text analytics API into our application or in the real world scenario. And why it is being it's uh, used in Logic App is a very best thing that it uh, detects the the sentiments of the particular text or contain so similarly uh, like um, yes uh, there are trans translator text api so this all are uh, like as a part of you can say uh, a restful apis again which is very easy to use easy to consume easy to implement into the application so let's go to uh, next slide that is knowledge so when knowledge uh, ca is categorized, we have some recommendation APIs. We have academic knowledge APIs. Now, I don't uh, want to go much deeper into all these things because we will be looking into this Q&A maker uh, API, which is again categorized as a part of knowledge uh, into cognitive service. So Q&A maker, in short, it's an uh, first you can say a uh, very first question and answer service API with an user interface. Uh, I I don't uh, like in, it's not in my knowledge there is there any other services or uh, cognitive services or like any other services being provided with some for such an easier user interface to work on and uh, it really helps in to solving a very uh, 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 common problem in the business scenarios wherein we need to have a bot or we need to consume the similar content so we will be saying uh, uh, more about this into our next slides uh, with a demo so uh, as on we will start with the demo it will be, you can uh, I will keep on uh, explaining the things about how it works and all so it will be much easier with rather than going with just in text and the next uh, comes in is uh, search so search is again uh, uh, like uh, the Bing search is one of the part of this uh, services this auto suggest API image search API it's passing the image it uh, searches a very similar kind of images and all so these are a huge set of uh, uh, cognitive services most of thing most of the APIs are on the preview are still in the preview and very few are in uh, uh, have given uh, gone live uh, but you can leverage all these uh, features or all these services even with your fee subscription for uh, Microsoft Azure. And there are some limits for uh, the calls being made. There are few pricing, pricing tiers for this. At, they have not uh, included many uh, as such. Uh, it is uh, still uh, what we say in a growing state. Still they are working on it. And uh, daily or almost in a week or two, there is something new services is on live. So, uh, let's move on to uh, let's focus on the QA maker now. So QA maker, uh, it's a tool or it's a uh, portal or it's a UI interface wherein we can have our FAQ section uh, converted into a bot in just few minutes. In just few minutes, if you have an uh, FAQ content with you in any form, if you have in a web page URL, if you have in some document, if you have, uh, if, uh, you can manually also you can create this FAQ. You can convert this entire FAQ data into the bots in just minutes, and I will show you that how in fewer minutes is just turned to uh, an, an a powerful intelligent knowledge base. Again, uh, it doesn't require any coding language. It's just in, uh, it's uh, straight away a few clicks and you are done. So it doesn't require any coding or programming knowledge. It is very much easy to implement. As we will see in the demo, 
like it just one or two steps and we are done so uh, the main uh, it has uh, has its own uh, web uh, user interface or web page known as qna maker.ai um can you move on to next site please sure the so qna maker is still in preview and it's free to use the best part it is still free to use and uh, only the pricing where it involves it when we integrate it with the azure bot where uh, there where the pricing uh, comes in but if you want to just uh, want to use qna maker it's absolutely free so now wow, when the qna maker uh, plays like why, when we have to use this qna maker so sometime we uh, we have some challenges in uh, developing faq bots again we cannot deny that creating a uh, bots is in a bit complex uh, uh, involves some uh, complex programming and all so it is uh, there is some challenge uh, for developing faq uh, sorry uh, any bots not only faq but any bots and uh, what happen is like for any organization they do have their faq contains with them they have certain uh, set of uh, questions uh, for related to their business domain related to their uh, products uh, offerings and all and uh, they want the user or the outer world to have those uh, common asked questions to be a very in, in the interactive way so you cannot ask everyone to come on and go to the page and read what you want and all in this at, at least in this time where we are uh, uh, using uh, like we are uh, if we need an information handy right so we use mobiles for this and again going to a particular web page searching through a huge amount of data the question we want to get into it and getting again the answers and if it's not satisfied all these things is bit complex all these things are bit lazier so to bring on this is again uh, like if 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 there is an provision wherein this uh, existing data or is this existing content if it turns into some database or we can say a knowledge base hereafter so if it is uh, you can use your existing knowledge base you can create your same content into a knowledge base without doing any extra efforts so at this time qna maker plays a role again if we have some in many organizations there are developers but again we need some developers with that particular skill set okay and now the developers many of the times are not the domain experts wherein the business like there is some client with uh, with any domain and it's not necessary the developer with that particular skill set is an expert into that domain so that he will be easily uh, what we say uh, consume what the requirement is and he will easily develop the things and similarly many times do domain experts are not the developers right so i am the for example i am an expert in my domain and i know each and everything but i am not a developer i cannot create a bot for my i know each and every answers the user can come in but i don't know how to make it into a bot so these are all the a common scenario you can say wherein you can very well use this qna maker it is very much free to use it is uh, all uh, in still in preview but it is very much free and handy to use can we move on to next slide please sure so why uh, qna maker so very first thing as i said i'm uh, mentioning this again and again it's very easy to create this bots now when this two things comes easy to create and bots it's it's really worthful right you creating a bot and it's very easy it's it's but this combination itself is worthful now then again it gives in curable endpoint it when you create this knowledge base when you create uh, when you uh, when the when you use this qna maker and when you try to uh, give your entire content and create a knowledge base it gives you a restful endpoint wherein you can just communicate that with that particular endpoint and you will be uh, like it's just a part of question sending the request as a question and getting the response as an answer that's it so it is very easy to use the communication happens uh, as in simple json so it is no, nothing uh, very lightweight again a very easy to format easy to read easy to learn easy to program again uh we can use it anywhere once the knowledge base is ready we get a restful endpoint with us we can use this endpoint into our mobile application into our web application into any of the frameworks which accept uh the end uh, which accept the restful apis we can integrate this uh, 
uh, endpoint with uh, or the this restful URL with that particular application. We can connect it to any channel because we have our FAQ content, our FAQ knowledge base in the form of a simple API. So we can have it, we can host it anywhere, we can host it on uh, the web application, we can connect it to the channels like Skype, uh, Kotana, uh, Telegram, Twilo, and many other channels which is now as per available with Azure Bot. Uh, this I'm talking with respect to Azure Bot service. You can uh, there you can use this uh, endpoint with other bot frameworks which, uh, which has some capabilities to connect with the different channels all across. So again, uh, the integration of these APIs with uh, uh, this bot service is also an easy way. I know uh, I am going too fast. The reason is uh, like it is very simple to uh, get the things. I know when you start, when we will start with the demo, you will come to know why I was going to, uh, very much fast with the slides because I want, I'm really very much interested in showing you how the things work. So you will be getting, uh, you will understand the things how what I'm telling you right now. Can we move on to next slide? So how it works is like uh, when you pass, um, uh, for example, an URL or a web page URL, a live public URL or a document, anything. So what it does it, it extracts uh, the question and answers from that particular uh, web page or that particular document. So it expects as of now the data into, to be structured in question and answer format. And what it does it, it just try to extract all the things you can see uh, on the screen like that this is the source. It could be a text file, it could be a TSC file, it could be a PDF or URL. It's just try to extract the question and answers from it and it creates a knowledge base when it uh, given out a world an endpoint. This endpoint then can be connected with Microsoft bot framework or sorry, any other bot frameworks and then this bot framework can be connected to any of the social channels. So it's very easy. It has a source. It has a knowledge base. It has an application end users to use uh, to consume the knowledge base. That's it. Now here uh, two things uh, to be uh, taken care like the maximum size we can have our content into our knowledge base or into our uh, you can say FAQ database is of as of now it is 20 MB. So you cannot exceed the size. Okay, you next, uh, and uh, like we will be having a demo wherein we will be uh, using Azure FAQ uh, URL and it has a lot, uh, almost 50 plus question and answers. We will try to upload some document, we'll try to upload some uh, TSV files again so that uh, the contents goes on increasing. And you can see it is uh, when we try to have this huge uh, amount of data, then two, it uh, comes up to something around 6 KB or 12 KB. So as of now, we have 20 MB uh, permissible in this preview stage. Uh, uh, the, the call limits to this particular REST API, the call limits to this particular REST API are 10 calls per minute. Is just 10 calls per minute and 10,000 calls per month. Okay, because this is still in preview and free, there are there are uh, some premium tiers wherein uh, you can have uh, 1,000 calls per minute and 5 lakhs calls per month. But again, for having this uh, premium uh, tier, you need to uh, go to the site and have to fill some request form. You have to provide some details about your application, like wherein you are using this or not. And it depends upon them, again, to approve or give this tier to you. So for uh, the normal, for the common use, you have 10 calls per minute and 1,000 calls per month. If it exits, your the, the if it goes beyond, the request goes throttled. So this premium tier is on request basis as of now, but uh, the available uh, 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 transaction limits are 10 calls per minute and 1,000 calls per month. And again, uh, there is uh, there is three things we can uh, on the fly in the browser itself we can test our uh, uh, the knowledge bot or you can say a bot in the in a chat format we can test it, the train. And we can publish it. Train is nothing but if uh, if you are modifying something or if you are uh, putting up, you're setting up the things. You just need to click on. There is a button uh, named Save and Retrain. This uh, this updates the 
uh, knowledge base that up say updates the data uh, uh, with the, all the mod the recent changes and publish the when you publish the things it is available for the outer world till then it is not so we'll uh, we'll have a look on this uh, please next slide okay so now the interesting parts come in demo so here uh, what we'll do is we'll build a, a FAQ bot and for demo we will be using uh, Azure FAQ uh, URL uh, and then we'll just uh, once we get the API uh, we'll just call it uh, from our .NET console app we have an um, sample code available so I just wanted to show like how easy it is to call then we'll try to integrate this, this knowledge base with Azure bot service and uh, then we'll deploy a sample uh, like an uh, F1 page application to uh, Azure web app wherein it will be connected to um, uh, the web chat channel so that we can chat it live we can we'll make our bot live uh, during the demo itself and we'll again uh, address some few uh, mistakes or queries which come in, comes in like as uh, Neeraj said I do have my YouTube channel wherein uh, I have recorded these videos and I used to get some comments uh, or uh, in the in that video like this is not happening this is not working this is not working and by knowing that I'm just uh, like summarizing the things like these are common things which we skip and we then try to figure out the things and we will try to address those things also so can I uh, share the screen uh, sure before we go ahead with the demo uh, let's spend five minutes taking any question and answers you know we'll just quickly take okay. the questions and then after that we'll get into the demo so uh, I will okay. go ahead and unmute the participants so you can uh, you know go ahead and ask your question so I have one question what is the main use of bots this is a very basic question maybe you can just address that See, bots are nothing. Uh, it's uh, you can. Uh, what are bots? Like bots is a simple thing. Uh, uh, anything which you program to do, to uh, which you automate to do, is bots, right? So what's the use? If you can say, if if you can consider this FAQ itself. So, I have you have your for uh, consider you have your some product offering, uh, and you have a list of uh, question and answers for that particular product, like how to register for that, how to uh, buy that, how to purchase, where all the pin codes are available. Just an example. Again, each and every time this, uh, it, you cannot expect the user to come into your uh, web URL and read all those things and all. You have some channels wherein you, they, the user try to interact. A user feels that he is interacting with the product owner or the with the product uh, admin or so, and he's he is chatting live, right? The bot, what bot does it, in this FAQ chat? What we are trying to do. We are trying to present. We are trying to have an uh, a interface wherein user comes in with their queries and we are answering them. Without without we getting involved into the things, our bot is answering them. So this is very. There are many many uh, use cases you can say, but I am very much uh, connecting, trying to connect with this FAQ bot. Yeah, just to add, like you know, bots is you know you can think of uh, next evolution of automation, right? So in automation, we automate this stuff which a human being would do. Uh, bots you know takes it beyond that and you know brings an intelligence inside that so intelligence plus automation probably you need to call it so uh, Neeraj and Kasim uh, this is Amit so uh, just one question from my side uh, so Kasim as you just said that uh, it's, it's more of a framework where uh, it's an auto answer or auto reply to the users right however however what I feel is that it's is it more like towards AI yes so so is it like the people who would be working on because i've seen azure bot service or some azure bot framework i have uh, come across so the reason i'm asking is that people do need to have ai knowledge as well to some extent if they are going to build something around the bot for qna maker no for integrating with that bot yes once it is integrated no mm -hmm. Like it is, uh, it will be, uh, as I said earlier, you don't have to be at, uh, no, uh, with specific skills. You don't have to be, uh, uh, what do we say, with having a knowledge of those programming or AI or coding as such. Once anyone, anyone, any uh, uh, member from your organization or from your team without having this knowledge, he can work on this QNA maker. 
Yes, but when you are trying to integrate with some framework, that comes in some skill sets uh, wherein uh, the person should be aware of where he is integrating those things. Of course, but when it comes to QA Maker, no. And my answer, I will justify my answer when I start with the demo. Okay. okay. All right. So we'll take one more last question, and then after that, we'll get into demo. Any any other question? Last question. All right. No question. So uh, uh, you know, you can go ahead and share your screen, uh, Kasum. Okay. I'll stop sharing. So you guys able to see my screen? Uh, not yet. Okay. Share screen. Now? Uh, yeah, it's coming up. Yep. You can see it. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Is it visible for all? I can see. Yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, here is the Q and A Maker AI portal where, or the web page wherein, uh, or you can send a user interface where you can convert your entire uh, FAQ content into a knowledge base, which could be available through a RESTful API to the outer world uh, within uh, very easily. So we can. We'll start with. Uh, we'll do one thing. Um, <laughs> Oops, if you're not speaking, you know, please put yourself on mute or like, and I'll have to mute the participants. Hold on. Uh, you have to unmute yourself, Kasim. Go ahead. I part muted the participants, so that will also mute yourself. So unmute yourself. Yep. Am I audible now? Yes. Yes, okay. So we'll do one thing. We'll take this uh, Azure support FAQ page Okay, yeah, as you can see on the screen, it has uh, uh, multiple questions and answers, almost 40 plus questions and answers over here. So, and we'll try to make a bot uh, for this uh, as a content. Okay, so the very first thing we need to uh, have is uh, the URL which we are using, it should be publicly available. This is the very first thing, or you can say prerequisite sort of thing. You cannot use any intranet URL or any URL which needs some authentications to go on. Like uh, you are going to that particular URL and it's asking, prompting for some uh, username and password, and then it is showing the web page. No, you cannot use those URL. It should be publicly available. So uh, this is the one thing. Now let's come to the portal again. That is the q and a maker so here the only prerequisite you can say uh, for creating this knowledge based service is to have your microsoft live id any outlook id and all that's it you don't need to have any subscription as of now so i have logged in with uh, this uh, demo uh, this uh, id for use for demo that is only ks at the red outlook .com. that's it so i've just uh, signed up with this and it has logged in into or it has uh, uh, like I'm authenticated for this uh, using for this QA maker. Like it, go, it asks for you some permissions for getting for with from your uh, ID, and uh, it asks to accept some agreement as you are using the Microsoft Cognitive Service. You have to accept some agreements for private policies and all. So it, there are two screens when you try to log in, and so, that's it. And you you will so be does on it this have, So the URL that you refer, so the the URL has to be in uh, FAQ format. Uh, you know that yes. Yes, it it should have it should be in a format of question and answers. Okay, question so it cannot it cannot really process the raw, uh, you know. Let's say for no. example, I wanted to use this for uh, building, uh, you know, Q and A for our chats that we that that we share right on the Azure Talk. So can we like you know if we export that? Can we use it here? No, actually, it should be in a question and answers format only. But yes, as a roadmap, uh, they are uh, working on to have some unstructured data, like as you said, for uh, data from the chat. They are working on to incorporate those unstructured data to be in, uh, extracted from some URLs. So as of now, no, it should be in question and answer format. Okay. 
Got it. Okay. So let's start. Let's let's not waste uh, uh, getting into theory. I will just copy this URL. Uh, okay. Go to Q and A Maker. So for creating a new service, just click on Create New Service. Now uh, during this uh, demo, just uh, like uh, what we say, think of it whether a person with no programming knowledge can do this or not. Okay, or whether and at any point of time you need or you require any programming knowledge. So let's start. Just click on Create New Service. It will give a nice interface again, a very huge with a big fonts and all. Uh, the very first thing is to give your service name. It it would just be as your uh, uh, knowledge base or a database service name, and you can change it anytime you want. So let's give it as Azure Talk Demo. Uh, now it asks you for the three things as a source. The very first thing is URL, any public URL, and second thing is files. The files could be in PDF format, could be in doc format. Uh, again, this if at all it is doc format or PDF, anything, it should be in a question and answer structure. Uh, or you can direct manually also, you can add the things. We will do all these three things. Let's, as of now, start with, uh, I'll just copy, I'll just paste that particular URL, which I copied from uh, this Azure support uh, web page. You can add n number of URLs you want. It should have a question answer format or else it will uh, give you an error at this point of time itself. Uh, what I will do is I have uh, I have uh, selected like I have created uh, one two documents. Uh, we will add this also and we'll see at this point of time. I'll add both the documents. Sorry. Okay. So now I have added a URL. And I have added two documents. One is in TSC format, and one in is one is in doc format. I will show you this file later. So just just for my understanding, sorry, what is this TSP uh, uh, format? Is is it like uh, TXT? TXT? Yeah, yeah, it's just in text, and it uh, like accept as in uh, TSV can have a tab separated uh, sort of text. Okay. So it it uh, accepts as question space answer, like question tab answer in this format. Wait, I will show you. Oh, so you have question, then you yes, press yes. tab, and then yes, that you have yes, a... yes, yes. So this is a DSV format. Got it. So I have a question: Why this bot created for tab, tab space for Azure session demo purpose? Okay. Uh, there's a question: Is there any limitation how many URLs or files we can? Uh... No, no. You have a limit on the size of that uh, particular content, and it should not exist 20 MB. Earlier there was five URLs. And fight uh, docs, but now they have. You can uh, add, keep on adding the things oh, unless so, and until it doesn't doesn't crosses 20 MB. Oh, so total 20 MB or single uh, URLs or single files? Total, files total, to total, total 20 MB. Okay, so show it's an answer. Your it, question. it is. It is not about. It is not about file size. It is about the content size. Content. We'll come to know. Just once I go to the next screen, you will come to know. Oh, okay. So this this was the doc file again in a question and answer format. Okay, which I have uploaded. So here. Yeah. So once you have added this files and once you have added the URL, just click on create. It will take few seconds. Great. And it has created the knowledge base. So it took less than a minute. It just extracted all the question answers. You can see over here. It just extracted all the question answers. From that particular URL, I hope your uh, my screen is yes, visible to all, and it is not getting hanged or so. I'm just scrolling it down. That's why. So yes, it has yes. it has extracted almost 48 questions. Then we have um, uploaded document file, so it, it is just filtering in the name like source that is the document file name, and this were the questions. You can see uh, we have added some links, and it is just converting into this markup language. So no need to uh, uh, again there is no knowledge of uh, no need to have a knowledge of markup language and all. You just create a document with links, and it will take it up uh, automatically over here. And that this is was our TSV file. So we have created this knowledge base. So this uh, entire uh, data, 
if you uh, if you download this uh, click on this you will get this entire uh, data in our text uh, um just one quick question um, um um this sounds really good but what i see is that you gave the url and then the text files and it extracted now yeah. right now it what it shows is one question and then it has a legitimate answer um yes. like you know in the real world scenario uh, let's say for example somebody wants to ask an address of a person or a or a business so he can say what's the address uh can you give me the address uh for so and so location and then, i mean the same question can be asked multiple ways so is it yes. possible instead of having one question and an answer can we have like 10 questions and giving to the leading to the same answer or is that yes. a limiting factor mm -hmm. once yes it is possible and it will uh, i will just come on to that thing um, it is a part of demo it, it is possible right very much possible okay right. can i start yeah, yeah go ahead. i will show you i will i will show you i will show you that so we have created uh, our uh, knowledge base and it is it doesn't uh, took more than 2 1 or 2 minutes so we have created this base now uh i will come to that point let's first go to this test tab test tab <coughs> tab where you can test the things and uh, just now uh, so when, one of our member asked yeah cuz some yeah. one question so when you know when we ask the question do we have to type exactly the same question or it can no, be some no, keywords no not required okay it could it, it understands with some keywords okay again good. and sometimes it doesn't we can train over from this test tab itself oh, so good. once we have added the knowledge base there is this two buttons which i was talking about save and train and the another one is publish yeah. so just click once on the save and train if you modify anything or you add anything just click once so that it will be added to our source now this hi and hello is a part of uh, as you can see over here as a greeting message or an editorial thing okay. you can manually add by clicking this add new q and a pair or uh, say greetings and the answer is welcome to azure talk demo sorry again i am just clicking on to save and train i'm going to test and here i will just type greetings so it will give me the welcome to azure demo azure talk demo so to answering the sir who uh, just now asked the question about yeah, sure. uh, the yeah. multiple ways of asking the questions now i want if at all some says uh, instead of greeting some says uh, hey how are you something like that yeah. okay so for that particular thing here is the provision okay for uh, this same answer you can add multiple questions whatever questions you need to you can give 3 4 5 question it will give the same answer got it got it okay so yeah, i, I think am that i am yeah i am typing hey okay this uh, now earlier this hey was not a part of our knowledge base right now i am just clicking on hey and i am adding it and i'm clicking on save and train so this says our knowledge base okay so whenever there is an greetings or hey comes in like i will type hey you have to answer the same question okay same same reply with the same answer yeah so so we can have many to one relationship for yes, yes, question yes yes absolutely 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 and this section i will explain you once we go uh, with, once we integrate the things so if at all now you go to this knowledge base you can see the our new question is added with hey with the same answer okay so this is how it keeps on updating the things but one thing is that whenever we add something whenever we modify something we need to save and train this again and again otherwise it will not come into action okay okay so, so there is a question if you don't have any yeah. thing question then what will be the answer he's saying you know if we ask any question for which you don't have anything in database what will so be there the is answer? there is an there is a default message there is a default message like if we say whatsapp this was not a part of question so there is a default message ah, okay. uh, comes in as a response and again we can change this message this default message to any custom message you want okay. but we can we will we will uh, this is a part again a part of demo if time permits i will show you this how to change the default message hmm okay so i think uh, we are uh, it is uh, like 
very much uh, understandable till now. That's fine because I need to integrate it with bot demo and then we can uh, play more on with these things. Is it fine? Sure. So there was one question. I don't know if you want, you want to take it. It's a long one from Shobit. Uh, it's like uh, we have a list of address like multiple locations for a company now. How do we get the bot to give the exact address we are looking for? Because uh, everyone will be asking for an address. So can we tell? So does it have intelligence? So let's say if I'm a person and I'm based out of US and I'm asking for office address, can it, uh, you know, based on my location, I mean, if I allow the tracking uh, through? No, if your request, if your request has some uh, keywords with your uh, respect to your location, yes. It will not extract or it will not take as, huh. When, see, when this knowledge base is ready, okay, and we have RESTful APIs, okay, and this RESTful APIs are just a part like we need to just uh, uh, send the parameter with questions. Again, at that particular time, if you are integrating it with some application and you are, you as a programmer is sending some location hint with the question, like if someone asks address and when at sending to that particular endpoint, you are sending address plus uh, the some location area or keyword of your particular location, in the response, it will give you that particular response. Okay. So, so you yeah. have to produce a request for that. It will not uh, automatically detect from where the request is coming in. It so if, if I say, if I type, uh, please give me my, uh, you know, nearest office address. So no. that will not work, right? It will no, not no. really. It is purely, see, no. Okay. You have to make it. You have to. You have to send. Uh, what? I, that is what I said. It, or or it if, if I say send me nearest address to my zip code, let's say zero eight eight one seven. So can it really help me? So can there, do... there should be a content with this particular thing, like the nearest uh, uh, address for this pin code, and there okay. should be a list of addresses. Okay. So you have to make this uh, as a content. You have to provide this content. See, it is not syncing. Uh, it is uh, one more thing. Now, when I added this uh, URL like FAQ URL over here, it, this thing and this our knowledge base are not in sync afterwards. Like it is only the point of time when it is creating the knowledge base, it goes and extract and create the data. If at all tomorrow the Azure website, there is some changes in FAQ, it will not reflect in your knowledge base. Okay, so they, these two are not in sync. You have to make it sync. Okay. And how right. to do that, how to make, how to use the user uh, input, uh, I will see in this uh, for the demo. Yeah. One uh, last question maybe, you know, Amit is saying, is there a time-saving way to introduce questions? I don't know if there is anything, any tool which like? cannot automate. No, his, sorry. Yeah, his question is, uh, if the number of questions are too many, it's tedious. Any time-saving way to introduce questions? Why it is tedious? If you have that entire question in a web page URL, something uh, you just you have when uh, you have now a free uh, uh, Azure web app, right? You just have the documented and uploaded on a particular URL and give the URL. How much time it will take to extract the question answers? Yeah, maybe he was talking about the retraining, like you know the greetings that you said, and then you said hey, and then you said further maybe thanks. You can you can yes, yeah, you can keep on uploading the documents. That's what I'm coming into. If you come to this setting section. There is one session uh, section name as settings, wherein you can add more files. So if at all you come to know that people are asking, people are asking for greetings, hey, what's up, how are you and all, you can create that particular document and you can just upload the document, that's it. It's a one-time activity. It's not at the first time we are giving URL, we are giving uploading documents, that's it. Going forward also, you can just go over here, you can add the URL from the settings section, you can upload the files, you can change uh, the service name from here. You can also give the ownership of this knowledge base by adding just uh, adding an email ID, an Outlook email ID, and uh, that particular person will also have the access of this knowledge base okay, and uh, many things. So it is, uh, it, I don't think so, it's the tedious part. Yes, the tedious part is to have those in the sink to maintain, the, to monitor what all things are being asking. Again, that is uh, being given in a simpler way. Uh, if you uh, uh, go into the demo in the further sync, you would come to know. All right, let's go ahead. Yep. Yeah. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's giving a deployment details. This is blank because we have not published it yet. And from here, we can also delete the service. So there are only three things, knowledge base, test, and settings. So now let's publish it. Hello. So it gives, hello. Yeah, sorry. We lost you for a minute, yeah. 
Go ahead. Okay, so there were only three things. Uh, one is uh, knowledge base, test, and settings. And I just clicked on uh, publish now. So it gives an overall review, like from this URL, uh, this was the number of questions being added, this was the document, and from this, this was the editorial which we added. Mm -hmm. Earlier it was one, then we added two, right? Yes. Just click on publish. So this will and publish, okay. Yes, it has given an uh, API are... endpoints, right? Oh, yeah. So it has two important things. One is knowledge base ID, the knowledge base which we created, it has a unique ID, and second is subscription key. Mm -hmm. So from, from the security point of concern or authorization point of concern, whenever the request comes in, we need to pass these two IDs with the request so that it tracks, tracks the number of calls and it is secure that it access uh, this particular uh, knowledge base. So there are two ways to get this subscription key again. One is from this particular uh, uh, screen and the other, if you click over here, that is a uh, thing, uh, Tab name okay. subscription key. You can get it from here. You can reset it. So I think forward. you know the subscription key is the same in terms of you know I'm trying to relate with you know the infrastructure as a service guys or the IT pro guys. Uh, subscription key is similar as we you know we have storage keys uh, shared access. Right, again. right, right. For every yes, for every uh, uh, storage key in the sense for every services it provides a key right to communicate with the things. It is same as so these keys are for the Q and A maker service. Uh, for this particular ID and the knowledge base ID is with respect to this like you can have multiple uh, knowledge base uh, develop so if you click on my services this all services get listed this was my uh, earlier I have just created this so we every have service this now yeah so every yeah. service will have subscription keys right primary uh, no ev yes every service will have different knowledge base ID subscription will be the same oh subscription, subscription is not yours yeah oh, okay yeah okay. So basically, so yeah. So to... basically, if I if I look at it, uh, you know, from the uh, storage perspective, if I'm trying to you know bring it in layman. So we have storage key. With one storage key, I can access file storage, queue, table, blob, storage key. Hmm. And so you know, basically, those are the different services that you have here. Okay. Right. So here we have created this. It's kind of database, right? It is knowledge. It's just given the name as knowledge base. So for how which particular uh, request is coming on is for base. It, it depends upon this knowledge base ID. Sure. Yeah. And if you are subscribed, the the subscription remains the same. So you can click over here to get the code. You can uh, click here to again add it and add those things, or you can directly delete the things. So it is. Uh, you can uh, like. Up till now, you have come to know like how easy it is to create your uh, content or your knowledge base through your existing contents. So till now, we have created this Q&A bot or Q&A service. Now we have to connect this. We have to consume this, right? Yes, we will consume this. So um, uh, I will do one thing. We'll first integrate it with uh, the Azure bot. Mm -hmm. So now for integrating uh, the Azure bot. Uh, we have something known as web app bot if it's into ai cognitive services web app bot this web app bot is nothing but a combination of your web app and bot web app plus azure bot okay it so it's a, it's, it's a chatting engine in a browser right just in it's an, no no it's an it's an bot uh, bot service framework wherein you are integrating your knowledge base and then it, it also creates an uh, web application where you can have your file or you can connect to the channel so we'll, we will see it. We'll see. So when you click on web app bot, so here is the bot name. You cannot change this. Okay. You cannot change this going forward. So this is your bot name. Let's uh, have it as Azure Talk Demo again. Okay. And uh, the, again, the subscription, the resource group. I don't think so. I should explain all this resource group and all as of now. Uh, okay. So we can, we can go uh, move forward. This is a location again. Now, this was the thing I wanted to show pricing tier, pricing tier. As of now, there are only two tiers available that is free. Okay. In the earlier I said, the pricing only involves when we try to integrate this uh, with our Azure bot service. So these are the two things, uh, the standard ones. Then again, this premium message contains the request and response we sent. So, so uh, in terms of both have same feature except that the premium has a SLA. Uh, yeah. SLA and this is... Uh, also the message per unit right right so right, okay. right right so let's go with the standard 
select it and the very important thing is the template so azure bot service provide this four templates as of now a basic uh, uh, chat window uh, or with a form flow there is louis you which can integrate and uh, uh, you can just read it out. Uh, I will not go what much is, into this sir, for five templates. Sorry, forgive me for ignorance. What is Luis? This is language understanding tool. Ah, oh, okay. Like language understanding. This is also Pardon. a part of uh, AI. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So as of now, it has given two programming languages, uh, supports like C Sharp and Node.js. Sorry, guys. I'm uh, getting a bit faster because I can see the timing is running up. We have time, uh, Neeraj? No, we still have time. Uh, we, it's up to 12.30, so we still have 30 minutes. So you can okay, 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 fine, fine. So we will select C Sharp, and as we have, uh, we want to integrate our question and answer template. That is, this question and answer template is being given uh, specifically for the QA maker. Uh, so we have, a, we can directly incorporate our QA maker service with this question and answer template. So select this template. Uh, again, you can go with the app service plan. Now this app service plan comes up with a web app which will be connect, uh, which will be deployed or which will be created along with this bot. Uh, so let go with some the sort plan. I don't know what it is. Fine. So it creates an Azure storage to save your uh, all details or the logs you can say. Let's go with all default things. It adds the application settings and all. Let's pin it to dashboard. Let's create it. So basically so what you have done, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So, so uh, as you can see, it has created, sorry. Uh, yes, yes, Neeraj. Yeah. Please. So basically what you have done is you have chosen a template, a bot template, which has a pre-code. It's already coded, right? It's already Microsoft has yes, already yes, coded. Yes, yes, uh, very much, very much. And Microsoft yes. offered Node.js and C Sharp, so we chose the C Sharp. And that C -sharp. once that, that's code is, you know, I don't have to code. It's already there. Now, no, that, nothing, nothing. And you can now, see the code itself. Yeah. yeah, now that code is in, we have borrowed that code as a template. Now that's getting deployed to the web app. Am I right? Yes. Right now. Yes. Okay. Yes. So usually in real world, we will create a web app and then, you know, develop, my developer will sit on Visual Studio, code it, and then publish it. In this case, right. you know, that coding which the developer has to do, it's already done by Microsoft in terms of a template. Yes. And then so initially what, what was happening was uh, there was Azure bot service. So we need to first create the bot service. Then we need to add uh, this Microsoft app ID. We need to authenticate everything. Uh -huh. Then we need to create a web app to deploy the, uh, the channels embedded code to uh, make it live. So in this last December, like December 2017, I, I believe in the last week or second last week of December, they made this, they introduced this web app bot wherein uh, in the single uh, registration uh, or we can in the single creation blade it creates both as a bot service also and uh, the web app also and we can customize these templates also right so if i want very to open much. in visual studio i can do that right very much very much uh, i will show you i will show you okay thank you uh, let's uh, Sorry, it's getting very interesting, so okay. I'm getting curious. <laughs> no, no. I, I, actually, the thing uh, I earlier said, ki I will uh, I will answer the question at the end because I was knowing that the, the question would be coming will be covered. Okay, fine. Let's go to the resource. So as you can see, uh, this blade is very much specific to the bot service, the, the bot management and all. And here are the two important things that is application setting and all app service. So if you click on this all app service, you will be uh, the blade for our web app gets open. So um, I think uh, all of you will be familiar, familiar about this blade, yep. this settings, which is respect to web app. Yep. And if you click on here again, you are into bot management. So this bot management, these things are uh, the important thing. We will go one by one. So this is the build part. Wherein uh, Neeraj, the what we were talking was, see, you can we can uh -huh. op op open up the code over here itself. We can change the code. We can deploy the code through browser, and it gets affected uh, affect into our bot. Uh, is it, the, is it slide, the same? The, is it the same as code editor that we have for web app uh, online code? Editor? No, not much. No, I will show you. Show you. I just clicked on it. Okay. Yeah, I th yeah, I think so it's, it's the same. same. It's the same, yes. It's the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. fine. <laughs> so if you go to this dialog, we have this basic QNA maker dialog CS file. You can see a simple C sharp code which has added this service, right? Yeah. And it has a constructor, it has passing the keys. 
and it's hitting the request and getting the response. So uh, the one which I said to you, uh, there is a default message, mm -hmm. no good match in FAQ here. It's, oh. it, accept, it accept this, uh, it's not an, it's an optional parameter into the constructor where you can, if you change this, you can change the default message. You can customize from here. But that is a very common mistakes people do. I will show you what that mistake is. But uh, let me go through this sections again. So you can open the code editor. You can uh, right away uh, code the things with whatever you want to change, like any default message or so. You can, if you click on this download zip file, it will give you a source code of entire uh, that particular code, which you can open into your visual code or uh, visual studio, and you can work upon it. And you can again push it. Um, here is a continuous deployment option wherein uh, you can connect it with GitHub, Bitbucket, or VSTS, uh, all the repositories to get in uh, the continuous uh, integration and all. Okay. So here are the three options. Now let's go to analytics. As we have uh, opted for uh, the application insights, so whatever the activities or matrices with respect to the insights, we can uh, see over here, like the all the matrices, like. Uh, I think there is no need to get into this much, but this is the section where you can see uh, the happenings of your traces of your site. Uh, channels, if you come to channels, these are the channels which are available and web chat is running. By default, it is uh, running. Oh, so we these, can, these are yeah, the channels yeah, where we will, we will, right, right. We will, we will interact exactly. with the bots, right? Exactly. So if you want, yes, if you want Facebook Messenger, you have to just go and click and uh, do the authorization. If you want Bling, you want Cortana, you can Skype, Telegram, Slack, many things are available as of now. But for today, we'll restrict to this web chat so to show how to how quick it is to embed and uh, go live. Uh, again, settings. Here you can uh, upload uh, any image for your bot. This is very much specific to some of the channels wherein the profile image is being displayed, like one of Skype or something where uh, for Facebook Messenger, you, you can also see the uh, profile image, right, of the mm -hmm. user. Yeah. So you can have your uh, logo or something. It should for be your bot. PNG. For your, yeah, bot. for your bots. Okay. For your bots. So now we, uh, we can change the display name. The display name is uh, nothing but the uh, name from which your bot will chat. So okay, so if we have given username of the body can say. Okay. So I will show you that. We'll change it later. Uh, if at all we have not uh, enabled the application inside, we can do it from here. But we have enabled during the registration itself, so it has all IDs. If at all we would have disabled it, we can uh, create a new application inside and we can add the key from these sections. So it has these three uh, provisions. Again, you can give a description for your bot. So whenever you are trying to communicate or authorize your bot with some other channels, this logo, this description will be a uh, like in profile for your bot. Uh, speech priming is uh, mostly for the speech enabled bots, wherein uh, 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 you chat with your bots, right? So the speech priming is more related to the, those kind of bots. And again, the bot service pricing is nothing but if you want to speech switch between your tiers which you initially selected. So uh, there is a very important thing is this test in web chat wherein you can chat with your web, uh, sorry, chat with your knowledge base and test your uh, with before going live. So it gives you an uh, almost similar kind of uh, interface. And if I type hi, I will not get any answer. The reason is I have not connected it. So it's oh, okay. saying that place connected and all. So how to connect is uh, we have a section named app application settings and it will give you a provision of adding two keys which I said is very much important that is knowledge base ID and subscription key. So why these options are coming over here because we have used q and maker template as our template for our bot template mm -hmm. and from where you will get this is from q and a website on yes yes if you click on cured so this is the knowledge base ID okay. let me copy this uh, so this is my knowledge base ID. So you just need the GUID. You don't need the entire URL. No, no, no. This entire URL is when you are calling from some uh, applications oh. or where you are calling. Oh, so that's a post. Ma that's a post method if you're using. Ah, post you can call from Postman. You can call from any of the applications. It's a just a simple uh, calling a RESTful API. That's it. Okay. Got it. So this is the key. So now I added the key. I will click on save. 
so uh, this this is very much simpler now earlier there was a uh, three step process to authenticate or to authorize your knowledge base with your app so now this web app bot has given only this two provision two keys that's it and now it must have connected so let's uh, check go to test in chat and click greetings Yep. Great. Yeah. So you can see the name Azure Talk demo. Let's go to settings and change this name. Yeah. So the username would change of the bot. Okay. Yes, Azure Talk. It should be of uh, max 35, minimum four characters. Got it. So this will be only a display name. You can change it any uh, any time, but you cannot change the bot service name which you created. Mm -hmm. Got saved. I believe yes. So now it's coming from Azure Talk. So this is just a change in display name. Good, cool. So as yeah, so as of now, like uh, to answer uh, the question of my friend, like. Uh, Again, when integrating with this, we need some knowledge, some programming knowledge, but to create the service for the creating the endpoint, we don't have to have any kind of uh, programming knowledge or AI knowledge as such. So only when so you're integrating the, the, yeah, when we're integrating, yes. sorry, when we're integrating bot uh, with AI, uh, with the Q&A uh, maker, that's when we'll need programming knowledge because yeah, we need some knowledge of Azure, right? Yes. But again, I haven't done a single piece of code here. I yeah, we just, uh, yeah. Till now. I yeah, think we, we just, just only added our clicking. That's it. Yeah, we just added yes. two keys. Uh, that's it. Uh, so that you know that's our it. bot can be connected to our Q and A, and then yes, absolutely, it. absolutely. I will do but one if thing. You need, if you it. need further customization, layout, all those on the chat, mm -hmm. then probably you'll be. Uh, it has. Program. It has given you a basic template code. You can just download it, open it in your ID, just change it, whatever changes you want to do, and deploy it again. That's it. Now we'll connect to uh, this web chat. Which is running as of now. Just click on edit. So it will give you a key. Uh, it and and I uh, embed code over here. If you wow. just, I'll, I will just copy this and and we can embed it in HTML any page, right? Yeah, any right, right, right. Any HTML and just deploy that HTML to your web app and you are done. So yeah, maybe if you give me that, I'll embed it to my Azure Talk website. I just paste it in the chat. <laughs> too much, too much, too much, too much. Just paste that key over here. Okay. This is the key. This is the key. Again, you can have it in multiple sites. You can click on this add new site, like for Azure Talk. It gives you different keys over here. You can manage over here from this. But uh, let's go with the default one. So my uh, source is ready, right? Yeah. So what I've done is for just for the uh, brevity of this uh, session. Uh, I have do have my uh, GitHub account. I have created uh, one repository uh, for, with a simple index.html file. Uh, sure, talk community. Okay. So it has an uh, index.html. So uh, basic uh, HTML, nothing as nothing fancy as such. And I will copy the source. It is just an iframe. And I will commit this. This will push out the change to your web app, right? Uh, I have just added this. I need to add this uh, into my uh, app settings. So for that, I need to go to this all app service settings and uh, go to deployment options. So this is the feature of uh, this. Is the deployment options are part of uh, Azure web, web app. Web app yeah. Yes. Yes. So now GitHub. I've already authenticated my GitHub account, so it will not be in those steps. Azure Talk Cognitive Master, okay. And it will deploy. So from now on, if, if any change you make in GitHub, it will automatically get pushed. Yes, if I'll commit the change, it will uh, start the deployment. Okay, yeah, committing. It will you you commit the change in uh, the GitHub with some comments and it, it will show up in the this channel. 
that it is deploying and this is the comment. We can do this with bit, uh, bit bucket also, we can do with the Dropbox also, we can do with OneDrive also. I think probably we'll need, uh, like in, uh, we'll need uh, another session from you on web app and the CICT. <laughs> oh no, yes, yes, no problem. I will be very much happy to uh, explore this web app. I really like this web app actually. <laughs> Yes, it is. Solve many problems because of this. I have started learning Git also. <laughs> Earlier, I was I was very much. Uh, uh, like, uh, one more thing I wanted to show. I don't know whether I started with uh, deploying the things. Must have started uh, because if we create some Azure web app, right? Uh, there is a default template like that blue color template with your web app is running in. And yes. so, but when you create this from this web app bot, this is the default template wherein it gives some links uh, to uh, get started with .NET or to how the portal is used, how to debug your bot and all. Got it. I think it should have uploaded. It's only one file. It should not take much time. Okay, so it has uploaded. Let's go back and hit refresh. Uh, you have to hit uh, index.html uh, slash. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. That is uh, using that H hosting file. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Perfect. So now let's create, click greetings. So your bot is live. You can also use this web URL and start. Uh, Communicating or chatting with this bot. It's can live. It's, public, it's on public URL. Can you paste this link for us? Yeah. The chat so that we can interact with your bot. Uh, here it is, right? Yes. Uh, so click on the uh, left. Go to the left side. Left side. The yep. The bottom one. Yep. Okay. All right, let's see. For some people, uh, for few people, it may not respond because it is only 10 calls per minute. And <laughs> we are more than 10 people. And if you hit at the same time, it will not reply. Okay. okay. So I said so, hi. Uh, okay, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So uh, quickly, I will go through like how to, like if I will ask uh, this question, the very important thing I want to show is, uh, Uh, I believe there is calls are getting. <laughs> yeah, uh, it got extended. Okay, <laughs> I, I wanted to show. Okay, so meanwhile, some all are trying the things. Uh, I just wanted to show, uh, guys, uh, uh, friends. Can you please, uh, like, it's a request. Can you please stop chatting with the <laughs> chat? I want to show a few things which are very important, and it's a common mistakes being taken. Uh, it's been uh, getting on with when using this QA maker. Please. Yeah, sure. I stopped. Okay, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you can uh, you can have your after this session. Uh, I believe there are more than 25 people. We can have 25 bots on live with uh, their respective FAQs. But at this point of time, please hold. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, want to we'll, show we'll, we'll... something. I will show something. I want to show something. Okay, it has already answered. Okay, so session organizer. Okay, fine. So now, uh, as you can see, uh, these two questions are very much same, right? Who organized this session and session organizer? So for one, it uh, gave some answer, and we want the same answer to be the one the question which sir asked earlier. Like it could be asked into different ways. So now we we know uh, to know like it is already live. Okay, I don't know what uh, Neeraj you have uh, asked to the bot or what what the other members would have asked to the bot. So how will I sync this? How will I come to know okay, what people are asking and what should be the answer? That is what I wanted to show right now. So if at all like it is now live, you have added something. 
Okay, just go to our Q and A maker and go to our service. Click on Edit. So this is the best part. This is the very best part. Uh, this is the way how you can sync your bot with the live chats. If you go to Test, that is something known as download chat logs. So this is a TSV file again with all the chats which is being happening live with this particular knowledge base. Oh. Now click on upload. So click I mean, on upload. Whoever has interacted and we ask questions. Yes, yes, yes. I will show you. I will show you. Just click on upload and again uh, upload this. So there were ten questions being asked. So it is showing you. So what was the question? You can say someone typed hey, and someone typed hi. <laughs> then it was greetings. That is Azure. So someone typed Azure. Okay. Uh, someone times greeting again. So see, this is a search organizer, right? Search or session organizers came here, which was the uh, thing which I typed in the very recent thing. So this file, if you open this file, uh, these are nothing but the chats, the request which comes in with the number of frequency it is being asked. This is the number. Tab oh. number. This three two, and it is in descending order. So you will come to know. You can prioritize the thing. Like, okay, so these are the things. Like, hey, uh, this question is asked by many people. So if at all there is uh, any particular question which is not being answered, and it has been asked for the multiple of times, you can just go to this knowledge base and give a particular of, uh, answer for that question. That's it, and publish it. It would be live. Got it? Yep. Yeah, it's a question. Space the number of times this question is being asked. So now, uh, if I copy this session organizer, so I will type over here. Uh, who organized this session? It gets the answer. So I will add this. Okay, I came to know someone is asking session organizer. As a question, so I will ask this uh, the same answer, and I will just save and retrain. Now the common mistake public uh, people do here is they click on save and retrain, and they directly go and check whether it is working in the test web chat over here. It will not work. You have to publish it. And I yes, absolutely. For going it live, you have to publish it. You have to take this both step. I don't know how it came. <laughs> maybe no. Maybe it is. Uh, we are asking this question again and again. I don't know. Fine. But the thing is, we need to publish it every time. That is the basic thing. It, means, uh, it is a very religious practice. You can say to save and train and to publish your uh, uh, knowledge base if you want to make it live. Second thing. Uh, so this is all about uh, knowledge base. Like uh, to create the service, to integrate and to sync it with this, we you can directly uh, replace this knowledge base with some other uh, set. It is again a TSV format with the same thing, question answer and so. Nothing, no, no nothing uh, new things over here. It all doesn't require any of uh, uh, what do we say robotics knowledge or logic and behind nothing. It's just a few steps you have to follow. That's it. So one more thing, one last thing I want to uh, show is if you go to uh, I will come again here. I will ask something uh, weird. What about Dhoni? I'm uh, purposely uh, giving this question because I know it's not a part of this thing. So, what if we need to change this uh, default, default message? Yeah, default response. So you need to go to editor for this. You need to go to editor for in this uh, CS section and just go and change this. Oh, okay. So we'll get back. Sorry, as of now, anything. Okay. So it is an auto save. It uh, saved uh, our uh, code. If you want to see, you can just navigate again somewhere else and come back. So it has saved, but it will not reflect. It will not reflect because when you, whenever you make some changes in your online editor, you need to redeploy the code. You don't have to redeploy or re, uh, retake the steps again. You need to redeploy this code. So how you will redeploy the code when you make changes in your online editor? So here is an option. You can uh, click on console. Here it is. 
open console and you need to type build.cmd. So what this will do is it will uh, again pub re, uh, publish your code, uh, build your code and it will, uh, okay, it's giving some error. Mm -hmm. It's saying right. npm so is that is fine, but this is the state. This is the code. This is the what we say command. You need to uh, add it, and it will just run. It will uh, give you. It will republish the code, and it will say that uh, the deployment is finished successfully. And then, uh, once you come in back here, and you just type with some uh, uh, weird questions or something which the knowledge base doesn't have the response with, it will give you the message which you changed. So that's. This is what I wanted to show. Like this is the common practice. Many uh, common error uh, people do. Like they just go and change the online editor, but they don't redeploy re the code. And then they come up with the queries like I changed the code, but it is still showing the earlier uh, default message. Mm -hmm. So you need the basic thing is you need to redeploy your code after every changes in your online editor. Excellent point. That's that, that's a really good point. I see a question yeah. from Della. Uh, so the question is. Are the chat logs saved? Maybe you can just uh, read it. Yeah. So are the chat logs saved in uh, Azure Data Lake or somewhere it can be easily accessible for analytics purpose? Uh, no. These are being uh, saved in Azure uh, storage into tables. Yeah. So I think it is it is being stored in storage account. Remember uh, when see. we created the bot frame bot. Uh, uh, that at a point of time, it also created storage accounts. So it's getting stored there. Right. And uh, uh, how frequently is, is okay? So let me unmute Dilla. Okay, I unmuted yourself. Now you have to unmute uh, from your end also, Dilla. Super. Thank you. You're so it's saved in um, a fabulous presentation, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when um, so it's saved in storage. The logs are already saved in storage in the cloud. So we can access those underneath our to do on. Is that a true statement? Uh, well, we missed your question. There was, you know, uh, your, it's yeah, your voice, your voice you are not audible properly. Yeah. yeah so can okay. you repeat it? Could... Sure. I'm sorry. Uh, my question is if it's, if the log the logs are saved in Azure tables, that's uh, fine. Mm -hmm. Or where somewhere Azure on Azure. Storage, yeah, Azure storage account, yes. Storage. So through our Azure account, then we can just access those logs to do any analytics we'd want to do on them. Is that correct then? Uh, yes, you should. You should be able to do so, it. We shouldn't have to write anything that automatically saves the logs. Uh, so, uh, custom these all these chat logs get saved automatically, right? It, we don't have yes, to anything. yes, no. Perfect. No. You can download it from the QA Maker portal, and you can uh, have it in that those particular TSV format. Right, but rather than doing that, if it's already saved on Azure, we can just access it for analytics on Azure. The Azure storage uh, for the QNA maker, no, you cannot access those storage account. Okay, that's what I'm asking. No, no, you cannot access okay. that storage account. You can only get through that so, uh, doubt channel. Yes. So we have to. Is there an automated way to save those um, that's built in, or do we just somehow have to create something that would then go into the maker and download them on a regular yes. basis? Yes, you have to create something. As of now, yes. As in future, now. don't know. Yes, in future, don't know. They can uh, incorporate those things also. As of now, no. You have to okay. download the chat logs. One more question, if I may. I just want yeah, to yeah, confirm. Please. In the beginning, you you were talking about it has to be a public URL, and now I understand why you said that because the maker has to go and extract. Yeah. Extract the content right. itself, though, because it's through. In other words. We wanted this to be private for, say, a members-only site. The okay. the content itself can be private because right. without the API call, no one has access right. to it. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So if Those you want to, yeah, 
if you want sorry sorry to interrupt so if you want uh, in such scenario like that is in private site and you need to have from some uh, dedicated or members and all at this point of time you can uh, upload uh, a file having those content with the knowledge base service and that's it you can upload through any documents right i can, that's what i noticed so i could have my yeah. q and a in word docs because it's right. private information upload it and but it does again uh, you sit on the roadmap <coughs> excuse me that the roadmap has eventually the ability to search the data do you have an idea how long that will be before that's no, available uh, no it's not about searching the data now as of now like if we upload the document it should be it, it has to be in the question and answers format right Right. So it is something around a structured format they are following right now. So as in uh, for the roadmap, they have they are working on further some unstructured data wherein they can uh, identify like this is the question and this could be the answer. Uh, I really don't know like when uh, it is to be uh, like it's expected to get released. But yes, whenever it will get, uh, I will be the I will try to be the first person to publish it. Okay, Kasim, <laughs> because I'm behind. I am behind this Q&A maker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have to tell you, we were we were at Ignite when it was Ignite announced uh, two years ago, and okay. um, thrilled at what you've done with this. Just thrilled about it. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Kasim, I have one question around this, something similar, on the similar okay. lines. So okay. what I see here is that you know uh, we get a set of questions at times, as you just showed, which probably are not from the ones from the, the knowledge base or probably from the documents that we uploaded, right? So is right. there a way that it can probably uh, self-learn? Because every time we have to save it, save and self, uh, save and learn. So is it, a, is it possible to self-learn for it, for it to self-learn things like, you know, some of the common things which are uh, getting repeated almost every time. So probably it can, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of add it to its uh, database later on which can be addressed by this. For example, you know, every newcomer comes and has a question uh, like, you know, why Azure Talk, for example, right? So uh, it's not been documented there in the documents, right? So it's it's happening with every new candidate or every newcomer who is coming into this group. So for example, there are 100 other people who are so, coming in and asking the same question. So Amit, if, so would if, it be I, possible? Yeah, if I understood, you are saying, uh, does it have uh, machine learning capability to learn new questions? Is that not exactly thing? machine not exactly machine learning auto learn here auto learn yes because we are saving it right uh, save and learn so is it possible for it to actually capture that something which is very commonly asked and repeatedly asked and probably add it and uh, can be addressed okay i got your question so as of now uh, if you talk about the self learn or some automate automate learn no, it's still there is no provision as such. But for the this uh, the question like uh, what is Azure, why Azure Talk and this is being asked multiple times. So that's the only way like you go just go and download the chats. It will give you an entire summary. Like if at all if we, we go, go with the same example, so this download chat will show this uh, why Azure Talk on the very top line. It comes in the descending order. Like it will show you this question is being asked for this many of times. And uh, it, that's why it is on uh, top. And you can just uh, reply the answer. You can add into your knowledge base the answer and save training, publish. That's it. So as of now, you have to follow this. There is no automate uh, option available. So basically, it is like uh, you have to add it every time you do it. Like if, if I ask a question, who are you? And there is no, no question as such. But uh, if the question repeats like every five, five, every, uh, I mean, five times, and it is all on you that you have to add that question yes, or no? Yes, yes. It is all we on have, you. That is, yes, yeah, the yes, person who makes the Q&A. Is, that, is yes. that correct? Right. You yeah. have to keep updating your knowledge with it. It's not synced with live chats or live URLs or live docu contents, anything. It, it's not synced with your source. It is on. It communicates only one time with your source, and then it all depends upon it. It caps. It keeps capturing the logs, whatever is happening, but it will not automate it unless and until you fits in into the database or into the knowledge base. But so uh, we can't say. There is no, no SQL is a, database or there is nothing no, 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 on the back. No, no, just, no, no. just the doc no, file. It's an, yes, it's an Azure storage. It's a table. That's it. A saving that's a portion it. Okay. answer. That's it. Okay. And is there a way we can back that up like Azure backup? Is there a yes. way? Or no? Yes. There is uh, an option for you to download the entire knowledge base or to get the 
let me go to that thing if you come to qna maker so this is uh, consider this is your entire knowledge base and now after 2018 february 2018 you are changing the entire thing you can just click on this download knowledge base and it will give you an entire set of this uh, you, you can keep it as backup uh kasim just one more thing related to your uh, the uh, web app and uh, bot integration so uh, what i saw is that uh, there are two keys that were required right for the complete integration right. so the moment it's integrated right for example there is an application uh, which is uh, related to some de details or you know maybe uh, some some uh, information about a certain thing right so there people come and ask questions on faqs they address the faqs so if we are integrating for example such an app with the bot service so uh, in that scenario we would need that database to be uh, in, in first uploaded to the bot service uh, and then after the post integration with the app then if the uh, the users come in they will be able to get their replies right right so if you have you are having an existing application or say it is already live on azure web app right uh, right just consider uh, azure tech or uh, azure talk website it is already uh -huh. uh, may consider it assume it's live on uh, azure web app itself okay and now you want to uh, add this embed code into that particular website in any page or so so uh, this was uh, i'm i'm very much near to your question right 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 right, right. Ah, so the only thing is, like, see, why I have added directly from this key, uh, from uh, this uh, blade or this section, is to mm -hmm. show that this requires these two things to get uh, communicate or authorize with your knowledge base. If at all you have already have your application, you may have your web config file. You can put it uh, across uh, this uh, keys into your config file, and you can call. Uh, programmatically call that particular key so the main thing is whenever you are trying to send a request to uh, the azure uh, sorry uh, this knowledge base they requires this two keys now it's upon you how you pass this two keys okay. so this is the simpler way this is the simpler way to add those keys okay got your point so it's it's just an it's just an restful api you can call uh, with n number of ways to your rest api right you can call from mobile you can call from web right. so it's just right. an end point that's an end point Uh, got your point. Uh -huh. Yeah. Just to the continuation of uh, question to Amit, uh, we can have your own um, channel also, right? Own channel in the sense. Like, like we have Telegram, we have uh, WhatsApp, we have other applications. Right. Channel in the application. sense. we can do uh, i and no sorry can... i don't think so like as of now they have uh, given a provision wherein you can add your channels that could be but as of now no so these are the things which is available right now so then, i don't know means it may okay. be okay so can we integrate with telegram with our own uh, application or no you know what i mean no sorry i'm so, not getting your question we can so, integrate this Yeah, I think Telegram, you know we yeah. Can, yeah we can integrate through the Telegram. In Telegram, that will be added as a chat bot, right? So let's say, yeah, I, can no, I add? Right, 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 right. And then yes. if you ask a question to that chat bot, you know, from the Telegram, it will respond and it will come back to answer. From this second. knowledge base. From this knowledge base, right? Exactly, Nira. That's what I want. Okay. Okay. Nice. All right. Yes, so guys, yes, I can. think you know yes, we can. are sorry. Uh, we are eight minutes past our allotted time. So we'll take another last question, and after that, we'll have to wrap up. Uh, you know. Uh, so Della has a question. Go ahead, Della. Um, on the log, as I'm listening and reflecting on what you showed, the log is an accumulation, and as you said, counts how many times that question was asked. Right. Um, is there a way to also get a log? I'm assuming that looks like the old. Does it? Do the logs have dates in them? Is there any way to resort so you know what questions were asked at what time of day or what day they were asked, so you can get a sense of the the flow and the um, Yes, you times. do get the timings. Yes, you do get the times. Yeah, maybe in a uh, custom, you yes. can share your screen and yes, 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 show that. Acha, my screen is not shared yet. Yeah, actually, okay. I took it over. Oh, no. okay, okay. In fact, I was. <laughs> okay, okay. That was going to be my other statement. Is whatever you just described wasn't showing. I took it over because we had a blank screen, so I thought it's better we put it. Out. Oh, is it? Is it? Uh, is my screen visible now? It's loading. It's coming. Okay. Okay. Yep. Can so if you it. go to this download chat again, I'll just I will just open up this chat. Uh, 
maximize it. So here you can see it has three columns, or four columns like question, the answer, uh, the frequency it is being asked, and the score timestamp. So the latest one which is being asked, here it is. Okay, but it only shows the timestamp of the latest. Yeah. So it doesn't no, no, show. No. It shows a timestamp of all the chats. You look at all the chats. It has timestamp for all. No, so like, can... yeah, when the late, uh, like, recently it was being asked. Oh. And, uh, with descending. Oh, yeah. so your question is, let's say if that question is asked three times, do I yes. have timestamp of all the... For... When all, no, no, no. Right, so it's it's an accumulation. It's not, I there's an right. accumulative. Right. There's not the individual logs. It's not no. an individual log, activity no, log. No, it's not an individual. So it is, the, the main uh, purpose of this log is to know the frequency uh, of the question being asked to your bot and uh, not when it is being asked. So it is also being sorted according to your frequency with the descending order of your frequency. So if at all a particular question is being asked many number of times, uh, rather like uh, at what time it's asked, it's not in concern, but no, how many number of times it was, it's being asked, that is the main, uh, what is a consideration point, uh, whether to add this in our knowledge bus or not. So, so is there a way so to have detailed log, Kasim? I mean, like, you know, can we have a detailed log of each and every chat which has, you know, bot has received? or right. the So this is the only uh, chat log which is available right now okay. through the portal. Hey, Neeraj. Neeraj? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Is, is it possible rather than having this format, if we can have it, you know, on the back back end instead of the plain text file, we can have it in a kind of like Excel file or something? I mean, you can do it. See, that's what, uh, you know, Della was saying, that you can use Python, you can use any scripting language, you know, yeah. to parse it. You can do okay. that. Kasim, one quick question. Um, timestamp would be the latest timestamp you said, right? The last question, for example, it, the greeting, it has a score of three. That is three times it has asked. And the last timestamp when it was asked, correct? Or no? Hmm. Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. And and there's no, um, nothing we can do programmatically or anything like that that we would have access to being able to get a, a, a detail log of an activity log or a as way to now, capture that. As of now, no. Okay. All right. But you can give this, uh, you can uh, very well uh, give this as a feedback. That is an option over here in the Q&A maker itself. You can give this as a feedback, like what all things is being, like there are many questions and very interesting questions coming in, which uh, it is not as of now available through the portal. You can give your feedbacks over here yeah. so that they could consider it and uh, incorporate in the future release. And also, Dela, you know, we have a couple of program managers uh, from Microsoft. Uh, they are also part of our Azure Talk uh, uh, Telegram group. So, you know, if in case there is anything that we need to send them directly, I can also, you know, coordinate that. In fact, they are also planning to, uh, you know, uh, create a concerted, uh, coordinated effort to leverage our community to make Azure better. Wonderful. Thank you. I'll, I'll connect in you on, with you on that. All right. Thank, thank you very much for the topic and the marvelous presentation. And thank you, Della. And thank, thank you, everybody, for joining. I know we are, like, you know, 13 minutes over, but uh, I really appreciate you holding on, hanging on for so long. And, uh, uh, Kasim, thank you very much, you know, for uh, giving such a great presentation. It was really a great thank one. You and, you know, thank to you. be honest, I also share the same uh, thought process as Alpes. I'm an IS guy, a PaaS guy, but, you know, I thought probably this will not be something I would understand, but uh, it was really... Yeah, I mean, initially I thought, initially I thought oh, God, I, I mean, I'm in the wrong session. <laughs> Yeah. But after the, after the demo and everything, it was like amazing, Kasam. Seriously. Neeraj, uh, just one last point here, not a question, just a point. Maybe next time uh, we have a Q&A session, it's the bot who is answering all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So hope the, all the questions are answered, all the queries are resolved as of now. Right, right. They are. Accept the accept expectations with the Q&A maker, <laughs> with the future release.
so thank you thank you very much for uh, having in the session thank you very much neeraj for giving this opportunity thank to thank you so much present. thank you so much thank, thank you. you thank you yeah. thank you guys so like you know we'll have more sessions and you know you can keep an eye we will upload it to our youtube channel so in case you missed or anybody else missed it uh, please do you know go to our youtube channel and you can you know have a look at it so it will get uploaded tonight or tomorrow so once again thank you everybody for joining us today and we'll have more you know as you know we have a lot of series going on we have beginner series now we are advanced series so we'll have next week you know, uh, another session on Azure Talk so uh, keep tuned to our uh, sessions to our chat and to our uh, you know website and subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, thank you thanks and guys enjoy. keep sharing thank you bye, bye. thank you